and today we have left Tel Aviv and we have come just outside the city to the old city of uh, Jaffa or Joppa and this appears in the Bible several times so the first time I can think of is when Jonah is running away from God and as you can see behind me we are right by the Mediterranean Sea so it's an easy place for uh, people to pop onto a boat and to make their journeys but it's also significant because uh, Peter was here when he had his vision. Hi, so I'm in Caesarea Maritime, which is where um, Cornelius was. So we saw earlier where Peter had his vision and he came all the way here. It would have taken him two days. Thankfully, it's only taken us an hour. And uh, he met with Cornelius and the other Christians and they received the Holy Spirit. But also in this place, I'm standing in a hippodrome, which was used for entertainment. So you'd have chariot races here. And um, Paul was here and he was put on trial. And some of the early Christians, uh, when they were put to death, they were sent out to their death here to be fought by gladiators. So pretty grim history uh, for this place. So although Caesarea Maritime isn't a religious place to go and visit, um, it's a very interesting place. Um, as a port town, it saw many, many different invasions. Uh, often the city was flattened and then they would rebuild uh, on those ruins, sometimes taking the very stones and things to, to build the new constructions. Um, and what is interesting is as they excavate, they find many different layers. And that can give us an insight into different periods of history. And as we look at different parts like these uh, ritual bathing um, places, we can kind of get a bit of an insight into the culture that Jesus would have walked in and, um, and some of the innovations that were coming with the Romans. And of course, things like the amphitheatre and the, um, the hippodrome just shows us the kind of entertainment that was going on and the, the use of kind of natural uh, ways to, to project. And of course, Jesus was very good at that finding the right place to speak to a crowd um, to make sure he could be heard. So although it's not particularly religious uh, visiting this place, it's very interesting to kind of uh, look back into history and see something from many thousand years ago. So we have come up a little bit now. We've been through Caesarea and we are on Mount Carmel. And Mount Carmel is a place where uh, we remember Elijah and the standoff he had with the prophets of Baal where um, there was a challenge to see who could uh, get a sacrifice that would be set on fire by their gods. And the prophets, they, they do all these things, do crazy dances, start cutting themselves, all sorts of things to try and get their, um, their gods to come and start a fire on their sacrifice. But nothing happens. Um, and Elijah, on the other hand, he uh, pours water all over his sacrifice and yet God is still able to set it on fire. So it's a pretty special place, um, thinking of how God showed up and showed himself and his power um, to the people at that time. I'll just uh, give you a little bit of a view. So on this site today um, are the Carmelite monks who live here. They've got a monastery here. And so it's still a place of worship where God is met with on this mountain even today, thousands of years later. You know, what's important to remember, of course, is that Jesus was a Jew and he lived his life as a Jew, which meant he went to the synagogue. He went to the synagogue to pray and uh, we know that he took out the scroll and he read the scriptures and that he taught and he spoke in synagogues. Um, and of course that this is all situated in history in the time of the Roman um, period and so it makes sense that some of this architecture has that Roman feel about it, it gives it kind of a, a good kind of setting of the background of what it would look like in Jesus' time. So a lot of the time here we can't be sure about what happened where but um, it's interesting to see the landscape and kind of imagine the things that happened and this tree behind me definitely looks like the kind of tree that Zacchaeus would have climbed to get a better view of Jesus got really good sort of branches. I definitely can see him climbing a tree like this. We are on the Sea of Galilee and we are remembering today where the resurrected Jesus had breakfast with his disciples and just cooked fish and shared with them uh, once again. So we're just here, we're going to share communion as a church, which I think is a really nice way to commemorate this place. Okay, so here we are on the Mount of the Beatitudes. This is where um, tradition holds that Jesus gave the Sermon of the Mount, which we find in the Bible, and it teaches a lot of the main teaching of Jesus is held in that. And particularly, he starts it with what are called the Beatitudes, or the attitudes we should have. 
to be holy, be attitude, your attitude. And as you can see behind me, perhaps not quite, um, it would have been a plain and then leading down to the um, uh, Sea of Galilee where we were before and the natural hills behind would have amplified the sound as Jesus taught um, the people. I'm here at the Jesus Boat Museum and what's really exciting is about 30 years ago they discovered in the seabed, in the mud, a boat which is from the time of Jesus. So this is the kind of fishing boat that Jesus would have got in with his disciples time and time again. And what's amazing is if this boat had been found previously in history, they wouldn't have known what to do about it because the, the boat, the structure of the boat would have just disintegrated. But it was found in 86 and they were able to use modern technology um, to transport the boat to keep it safe. Um, and it's just really encouraging to find these kind of historical artefacts um, that just take us back to the time of Jesus. Galilee from, from a boat. 